right, now you can do that, right? All right. I should have done that earlier. I could have heard my answers better, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Philippians chapter 3 is where we're going to be at tonight. Philippians 3. Probably some pretty familiar verses this evening. We're going to talk about some New Year's resolutions. We know, we know that's on the, the cusp, right? That's coming up in a, in a day or two. So I, I really feel like we need to talk about a resolution that we can actually keep uh, tonight. And you'll, you'll see where we're going for that. We'll go ahead and read, starting at verse 13, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. I'll give you a second to get there. The Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thus therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Let's pray tonight. Lord, we just thank you again for your word. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done for us, Lord, even tonight by bringing us here, Lord, and uh, those that have mentioned in testimony time, Lord, just being able to wake up this morning, and uh, God, just what a blessing it is to be here tonight under your, your word, Lord, I just pray that you'd help me to speak in a way that would touch hearts tonight, Lord, that would stir us to want to do what you have us to in our lives, Lord, and that you would just, Lord, be with the service tonight. I pray everything we do would bring you honor and glory this evening. And just ask in Christ's name, amen. All right, you guys can be seated tonight. So we're thinking here about New Year's resolutions. How many out here would be honest tonight and say they've got a New Year's resolution they're going to make this year? Nobody? Nobody's going to be honest? Okay, all right, you got one. Okay, I'm not going to ask you what it is, so you don't have to be nervous. You can just stick your hand up. Okay. Hmm, okay. One, two, okay. Okay, so my numbers are off then, okay? So, so we had a, a, there was a study that about 50% of the population, give or take, is going to make some kind of resolution, some kind of New Year's resolution. So that didn't, that didn't pan out in here. That was only about 30%. So, so y'all are just, y'all have arrived, right? Y'all got everything taken care of. Everybody's good. So that's, that's going to be good, okay? But I want you to think about this. Brother, Brother T to mention this about how time just really goes quickly. And I think the older you get, and I, I, I don't want to say I'm old. I don't feel like I'm old at all, but the, the older you get, you really start to realize how short of a time you, you have, right, and, and how things progress. I just look at this row, and I can remember even bringing, you know, my oldest as a junior in college now. I can remember him being that little bitty, you know, and, and what that was like. And some of you have the same, you know, your little itty bitty is, you know, got grandkids now and things like that, right? It, it just, it, it happens quick, and, and time flies by, and just going through, an update of thinking of where all we've just been in the past year and a half, past two years. It's kind of, it's a daunting task, right? And we realize that our time is short. And, and there's so many blessings that God has given us if we really just think back and reflect on what all God has done for us. And I, I didn't share this during the testimony time because I kind of wanted to wait so I got up here. I knew, but we were in Birmingham uh, for a family event, we went to a ball game. I'm, I'm super spiritual. I'm telling on myself, okay? But we went as a family to have family time and do those things. But what, what's neat about Birmingham to me is a lot of you that know me know our testimony with our son Joseph, how he had seizures and how he was in that hospital in Birmingham, Children's, Children's of Alabama, quite a few times. So it was kind of neat for us to go back and to do something fun and be able to just drive by that place and look at it and know what God did for us through that place and that we're not there having to deal with treatments and deal with all these things. I mean, I feel a little guilty because I know there's a lot of kids that are there that are dealing with some serious things, but God allowed us to have some victory in that area. And it's just a blessing to think back on that and think about the reason that we're able to do this ministry that we're in is because God 
healed my son from the epilepsy that he had. You know, we, we couldn't travel and do what we do if he was bound to a hospital bed or bound to a hospital or, or anything like that. So it's just, it's just amazing to me to really sit back and just think, that's just one thing that God's done for me. I could sit up here and, and feel the whole service of just thing after thing that God did for me. And the thing that is amazing to that is that I'm nobody special. And I, I don't try and toot my own horn at all. God's just been good to our family. And sometimes I'm in awe and I just wonder why. Why it's been so good to me. Why he can use me to do the things he does. It's just amazing. And my encouragement, I, I want to be an encouragement tonight. We think about a New Year's resolution or we think about this upcoming year and we think about all these new things. You know, we, we think about the new opportunities and how, you know, the, the past year or past two years really since COVID hit and all these different things. You know, there's all these different ideas floating around our head, no doubt, that we want to do maybe differently because of what we learned in the past. Or maybe we want to try something new because we know that maybe our time is running short and what are we waiting on, right? What are we waiting to, to have these things happen? Well, Paul here in our text is kind of giving us a roadmap or an example to follow. He's saying, you know, we're, we're supposed to be examples. Mark us that are, that are walking the right way, that are doing the things that, that we should be doing. We're pressing for the mark, right? He, he's going forward. He's doing what God wants him to do. My encouragement to you tonight is I want you to think about what it is God has called you to do. You know, obviously, you're here tonight under my voice, so God's called you to, to be in this place where you're at tonight. He's given you a job to do whatever that task is. I, I saw back there in the, in the back on the bulletin all the list of opportunities to serve in different areas. You know, maybe this is a year that you say, okay, I'm going to step out on faith, and I'm going to start doing one of these things that need to be done. The you know, pastor didn't, didn't pay me to, to do this. He can get me later, but you know, he needs your help. He can't do it all on his own. You know, this place needs everybody working together to, to make it grow in the right way. And that's just a side note there, but you know, I want to give you a definition here of, of what a resolution is. So, so Wikipedia, you know, that, that's never wrong, so this has got to be a, a, a true statement here. It says that Wikipedia defines a New Year's resolution as a tradition most common in the Western Hemisphere, but also evident in the Eastern, in which a person resolves to change an undesired trait or behavior to accomplish a personal goal or otherwise improve their life, okay? So I put together a list of the most popular resolution, most popular goals. So who can guess what's the number one thing that's the most popular New Year's resolution? Besides pastor, he's excluded, right? You can't talk, no. Lose weight, okay? So physical well-being, okay? So... Number one goal is that most people want to improve their, their physical well-being by diet, exercise, eating healthy, doing all these things that, you know, we're, we know we need to do, but we don't feel like doing them, right? Sometimes we, we feel like doing them, and then we lay down until that feeling goes away, and then we're, we're good, right? We don't, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so number one is, is physical well-being. What about number two? So everybody gets number one. What's, what's the number two most popular? What's that? Spiritual, it should be, but it's not. That's a good, we'll get to that one. Okay, so you got physical, and then the next one would be your mental. Okay, so number two is improving mental well-being. So if people will try and laugh more, they'll enjoy life, uh, get out in nature, uh, they try and lessen the stress on their life. These are the goals that, that people have, right, the, the, the two top resolutions that are made. Uh, then there's those that decided to improve their financial well-being, right? They, they, they say, well, this is the year I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to sell some things. I'm going to you know, get that extra job or I'm going to start a lemonade stand you know, or whatever it is that, you know, your, your side gig, Norwex, you know, whatever, right? You know, all these different things that people want to do to try and improve their financial status. And that, that's nothing wrong with that if, if we're doing it so that we can give more to the Lord's work, right? We need to think of it that way. I, I know... That's the best decision I ever made was trying to get out of debt. That's, that's the reason that we're able to do what we do and travel full-time is because God allowed us to do that and give of ourselves. You know, maybe that's something the Lord's working on your heart about, but you know, that's, a, that's a number three thing. And then others will try and improve themselves by maybe changing their job. Uh, maybe there's a resolution to, 
to read more in the coming year. You know, maybe you want to learn a, a language. You know, maybe you want to go back to school, get a, you know, get a better education, or finish something that you started way back. There's all these different things that people set as goals, and there's nothing wrong with these except for the fact that the major problem is, is what? That nobody follows through, right? Very many people don't stick with their resolutions. So if you made one last year, again, I don't think anybody's going to raise their hand because you guys weren't raising them earlier, but uh, you know, if you made a resolution last year, did you, did you follow it? Did anybody make it? So I made this resolution and I did the whole thing, right? Not, not very many, okay? And maybe you did, maybe you just didn't want to raise your hand, but according to this study, again, Wikipedia, okay, so I don't know how truthful it is, it says that almost half of Americans will make some sort of New Year's resolution but the problem is that 25% of those people have given up on them before two weeks go by, right? So some of you are thinking pretty good of yourself. Well, I made it three weeks, so I got, I got them beat, right? But really, in the scheme of a whole year, is 12 months, right? That's 52 weeks, so the first two you've already given up on, right? That's, that's our problem with these resolutions sometimes, and a lot of them are because we make something that, you know, maybe it's a goal that we want to attain, but... You know, we don't stick to it. Well, the, the resolution I think we need to make tonight or that I want to encourage you to make tonight is that simply we need to press toward the mark. We need to be more like Christ this coming year. I think that's a, a goal that all of us would want to have, and it's also a goal that all of us can totally reach. You know, it's something that we can do, like 100%, we can accomplish that, but it takes some involvement on our part you know God's going to do his part of that equation right God's there he he's never moved we're the ones that move right Malachi said I, I'm Lord I change not you know so there's a goal here that we can all attain if we decide that we're going to do that you know if, if you're a person that maybe you you want to attain you know an achievable goal you know you think of you know, New Year's resolution, the joke is that, you know, maybe you're going to make one that you could actually keep. Like if you say you want to read more and then you put the subtitles up on your TV, you know, that, that doesn't count, okay? I'm just saying that, yeah, yeah, you might be technically doing, well, I'm reading more because, you know, there's some, no, it doesn't work that way, right? Or, or maybe you're a lady and you say, well, this year I want to you know, look skinnier than, than, than all my friends, so I'm going to do my best to, you know, help them gain weight, right, so I, so I look better. You know, that, that wouldn't be right either. Right, but those would be maybe some some kind of cheating ways to do this. Well, there's no way to get closer to God other than committing yourself to to be in His Word and to pray and to be where you're at tonight under under God's preaching. Right, that's that's what you need to do. We all need that in our lives. You know, a resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. Okay, I, I want to say it again. A resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. You know, a lot of people say, I'm not going to do whatever anymore. Or they make a decision that a resolution, I'm, from this point on, I'm going to whatever. You fill in the blank. Well, this resolution that we're looking at tonight is simply, in, in Paul's words here, is we need to press toward the mark. You know, we need to become more like Jesus Christ. You know, we, we read the passage here, starting in verse 13, in verse 14, it says, I press toward the mark, what, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, so, so the first thing, if we're going to press toward the mark, if you're taking notes tonight, the first thing that we need to do is we need to skip over the past. Okay? Skip over the past. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So we need to forget the things that were behind. So, so what things is it talking about? Well, the first thing is all the bad stuff, right? The, the failures, the, the heartaches, right? The, the disappointments. Everybody can say, check, yeah, no problem. We're easy to, to forget about all those, right? We can move right past all the bad stuff, no problem. That's easy for us, right? Even if it's something that maybe we did to somebody else, we want to just sweep it under the rug, right? Or something that happened to us is a little bit harder to forgive, but we need to forget about all that bad stuff, and it's easy for us to say, okay, yeah, I can, I can forget about that, but also you need to forget about the good things too, 
you know, that's a little bit harder for us. We, we can't sit back and rest on what happened before, how, you know, we used to do this, or this used to happen, or I can remember when. That doesn't matter. You know, we need to press toward the mark. We need to keep going forward for Christ. You know, we can't sit back and think, well, you know, this past year we had a, you know, we had a good youth meeting, or we had a good VBS, or, you know, we had a, a couple baptisms. I mean, that's, all those things are great. You think about the testimonies you guys gave, and think about what God did for you this year, and all those things are awesome, but that doesn't just excuse us from, from going forward. We can't just rest on those things, right? It doesn't work to say, well, you know, one time I ate a, a couple of vegetables, okay? And so there's no reason I should ever have to eat salad again, right? I'm good, right? That doesn't, that doesn't work like that, right? That, that doesn't help you health-wise to, to, to think like that. Neither does it help us spiritual-wise to think, well, you know, I, I did witness to somebody one time, and you know, there, was, there was this one time that, you know, I talked to the guy about the well, that doesn't count. We need to keep going forward. We need to keep pressing toward the mark. We need to keep giving out tracks and keep witnessing and talking to people because God has given us a task to do. You know, we need to keep that in our mind. So we need to forget those things that are behind it, and, you know, we need to press toward the mark. You know, these things can encourage us to know that God can do it again. You know, that's the thought that we need to have is we need to think about those things. I'm not saying just forget all about the past. I'm saying remember what God did before and remember that that same God is at work now. He could do it again. And he can do even greater things than that. But we can't rest on what happened in the past. You know, we got to keep moving forward. we got to press toward the mark, right? COVID happened. Yes, all the stuff that came with it happened. But what are we going to do about it? We're going to keep pressing forward, right? People still need the Lord. You know, people didn't automatically just get saved when COVID happened, right? We, people still need Christ. He's still giving us the same job to go out and to knock doors and to hand tracks. And yeah, you might have to get a little bit more creative than we were in the past, but that's what needs to happen. And you know, we need to press toward that mark. You know, so we're going to skip over the past. And next, we need to stretch for the future. It says, reaching forth under those things which are before. You know, we have to keep moving forward to see what God has next for us. You know, you think of Paul here in the previous verses, if you'll turn back to, to verse number 2, chapter 3, verse 2, Paul is kind of given this list of his pedigree, if you will. He's saying, like, this is who Paul is, right? In uh, chapter 3, starting with verse 2, it says, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. It says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath therewith, if he might trust in the flesh, I more. Then he goes on here to give the list of why that he should be able to kind of brag on himself. And if we're not careful as Christians, sometimes we put ourselves in this position. We kind of get ourselves in the flesh and have confidence in what maybe we've done, and not give God the credit for what He's done in our lives. Look at Paul here. He says, Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ." Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death. If by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I might apprehend for that which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So verse 10 says there that, what, that I may know him. You know, that, that's why Paul did all of these things. He said, look, if anybody had room to brag about what they've done or the accomplishments that, that they have, I, I got all y'all beat. Right? I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. I was a Pharisee. All these things, touching the law, blameless. I've done all these things. But you know what he said? I, I can't all but loss. 
right, to be able to gain Christ. You know, we need to look at our lives in the same way. You know, we need to think about as we're, you know, stretching for the, the future and we're reaching forth that all those things that, you know, may have happened or all those things that we've done or God allowed, you know, that's all great, but what are we going to do with that now? You know, Paul said, I, I can't all that but dung except for to be able to, to get to know Christ. You know, my question simply is this, do, do you know him? You know, do you know him tonight? Do you know him as your personal Savior? Can you have this same confidence that Paul is, is saying here that you know, all that stuff doesn't matter? What matters to me is verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You know, that, that's what the important part is, and that's the part that we need to share with others. You know, so as we're skipping over the past, we're stretching for the future, we're, we're reaching forth right onto those things which are before. And it says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, so the high calling of God is the invitation for salvation. You know, we've we got to reach for those things which are before by living righteously. And you think about this calling, it, it's always a, a threefold calling. There's always three parts to it, you know, because of God being... Three and one. I, I think he, he did that on purpose. But, you know, the three parts is, the first part is repentance. You know, sometimes God is calling us to repent. Sometimes God's saying, look, you, you've been going this way and you've been getting involved in these things. You need to repent. You need to turn back to me. Sometimes God is calling us to get, to dedicate ourselves to him. You know, he's saying, like, look, you're, you're, you're supposed to be doing this. I'm calling you into this type of work. You know, and thirdly, sometimes it's a specific call to specific ministry like I, I got a chance to talk about how the Lord used my circumstances to call me into what I'm doing today you know those are that's a threefold calling and, and no matter where you're at in this room you're part of that process right now God is calling you to do one of these three things you know what what stage are you at what part of that calling are you in right now you know maybe this year is a year that you decide to go forward by faith and do what God's called you to do. You know, it was a scary thing for me. I left out the, the juicy details there of you know, being in construction, having a business, and you know, having employees, and having an income you know, that wasn't dependent on anything but myself to stepping out on faith and letting God provide and seeing how God was going to work those things out. But I'm so glad I did. You know, he can do the same thing for you tonight. I, I'm nobody special. You know, I appreciate him asking what kind of skill set. Just being willing. You know, God, God will use a, a willing vessel. Amen. You know, that, that's what needs to happen. That's the resolution that we need to make. You know, but look at verse 15. It says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect. Now, not perfect in, in, in that sense, but as far as being thus minded, if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. We need to have the same mindset of Christ it says in verse 16 nevertheless whereto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing that that word there that says thus minded means let us hold the same opinion you know we need to realize as Christians that we need the Holy Spirit to guide us you know, as Christians we need to raise our kids biblically you know, we're going to stand out it's going to be a clash of culture. You know, I've been listening to a sermon series from Brother Kenny Baldwin, and he talks about this culture clash. And you know, if you're trying to live like the Bible tells you to live, there's going to be a clash with the culture because that's not what the culture is teaching us to do. Right? We're going to stand out. We're going to be different. But we ought to be different because of what Jesus Christ did for us. You know, he bought us. He, pray, he paid for us with a price, with his own blood. You know, we need to stand out. You know, we should live the Bible. You know, I, I know some of us, you know, we want to pray for our meals and, you know, things like that, maybe in private or, you know, maybe we talk about the Lord, but when we get in public, we kind of shy away a little bit. You know, and, you know, we get a little uh, apprehensive about maybe talking about the Lord like we should. That, that shouldn't be our attitude. You know, we should have everybody to know, I'm a Christian, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, that... That's part of that resolution that we need to, to have. I mean, we need to make sure that we're going to do those things, not, not only this coming year, but, but right now. You know, we, we could do this now. We don't have to wait till the new year start to be more like Christ. We could start that tonight. 
the Lord could do a work in your heart to, to allow that to happen. You know, a lot of times before a meal, we'll, we'll quote 1 Corinthians 10.31. It says what? Joseph, I'm putting you on the spot. Amen. Good. So whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, you all to the glory of God. There's, there's all kind of opportunity. All means what? All. Right? Whatever you're doing, you should be doing it to the glory of God. Whatever position He's given you, whatever job you have, whatever stage of life you're in, you could use that for God's glory. But it takes some resolve to do that. You know, look at verse 17 here. You know, this is kind of the, the backside of this verse. There are some people that make a resolution that they're not going to follow God. You know, that's who it's describing here. I, I don't want that to be anybody's testimony, but I think we need to look at these things so we know who these other people are that he's talking about. It says, Brethren, be followers together with me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example, right? That's an example we want to follow. It says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto His glorious body, according to the working whereby He is able even to subdue all things unto Himself. So remember that definition of a resolution. It's a firm decision to do or to not do something. And here it's talking about these people that decided they're not going to follow Christ. And, and look at what, what happens to them here. It says their, their end is destruction. You know, their eternity is hell. You know, if they die without Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're going to hell. You know, that's a reality that we need to remember that there's people that made this resolution that I'm not going to follow God, and this is where they're headed. You know, we need to be a light. We need to be a witness to those people. You know, their end is destruction. You know, God is their belly. They, they get involved in you know, all kind of fleshly desires. You know, it's not very far to see. You go down Old Montgomery Highway the, the wrong way and go across, you're in a place that promotes a lot of those things, right? It's, it's right there. You know, and I think about that when we come here and God placed this church exactly where He wanted it to be, to be a light in this community because he knows those things are taking place. You know, we, we don't need to put blinders on. We know that stuff is happening. Well, this is who it's talking about here, right? God is their belly. They're just doing what they want to do. They're just fill, fulfilling their flesh, right? Because they're not being led by the Spirit. You know, it says whose glory is in their shame. You know, that's their reputation. You know, that's when they do all these evil and wicked things and are known for it. You know, if you're living in sin, you're going to be known for that sin. You're going to be known by that reputation. You know, that, that's what's happening here. You know, people think they have some people fooled, but God sees everything. He knows. He knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. You know, where's your thoughts at tonight? Where's your heart at? You know, where are you at? Are, are you one of these people that it's talking about here who's serving their flesh instead of letting the Holy Spirit direct your actions and your attitudes? You know, if you're living in sin, you're going to have a reputation for that. It says their minds here on earthly things, not spiritual. You know, our, need, our, our minds need to be on spiritual things. You know, don't, don't let this describe your life. Don't let this be you that, that made this resolution. I'm, I'm not going to move. I'm, I'm not going to be stirred by God's Word. I'm not going to do anything other than what I've always been doing because that's what feels good to me. And I'm saying tonight, maybe God wants you to make that resolution and just... Give up those things and surrender to Him. You know, God's given us a task of witnessing to these people, right? And I say these people loosely. I don't want to mean like these people or these certain people outside these walls. We need to remember that we're all in the same boat. You know, 1 Corinthians 6.11 is a good reminder. I, I say this verse all the time. It says, And such were some of you, but you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. You know, we don't need to think too highly of ourselves because this is describing us before we got saved. Right? It says, such were some of you. That, that's exactly who I was before I got saved. Right? I just served myself. I just did whatever I felt like I wanted to do. You know, these are the types of people that need the Lord. 
you know, and he's given us a task of doing it. That's kind of that threefold calling, right? We, we've repented, right? Hopefully if we're saved, we've repented of our sins, we accepted Christ as our Savior, and then we need to dedicate our lives to him, right? Well, that's what you're doing here tonight. You're under preaching, you're under God's word. You're dedicating yourself to come to church on a Wednesday night. I, I praise your name for that. Well, then he gives us a specific calling. You know, what is yours tonight? Maybe it's to witness to that coworker that, Myself or, or Brother T will never get a chance to witness to. You know, maybe it's a family member that you have that needs the Lord that He puts you in that position for, for that purpose. You know, whatever that encounter might be in the grocery store or the hardware store, whatever, you know, maybe the Lord had you there just for that reason. You know, are you going to make the resolution to do what He's asked you to do and, and be able to share the gospel with that person? Uh, I, I pray that you will. You know, last thing tonight we need to look at is we need to stay the course chapter 4 verse 1 it says therefore my brethren dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord my dearly beloved stand fast and we need to stand fast in the Lord. we need to be focused on whatever it is God wants us to do and just continue to do it it's such an encouragement to see familiar faces when I come back somewhere because that that tells me that you guys have been faithful, that you're standing fast, that you're here in your place where you ought to be. You know, that's important. You know, pastor needs that. He needs faithful people. You know, and it's encouraging to me to go back and, you know, we, we get to travel, we get to do a lot of different projects, and we get to come back through a lot of different churches that we've helped and, you know, kind of see how the church has progressed. And it's always an encouragement to see some of the same people that were there when we were there doing the project. You know, because it's an encouragement to know that people are being faithful. You know, it helps me to remain faithful myself. You know, we need to stay the course. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight says we need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know what, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know, a lot of times we like to focus on that, that steadfast, unmovable part, but you know, we need to remember the last part of that verse. Our labor is not in vain and the Lord. If you're doing something for the Lord, you might not see the benefit of it right away, but God's going to bless that. He's going to bless that work. It's not in vain. Anything done for Christ is going to have some, some eternal benefit. Just remember that. There's going to be some fruit abounding to your account. When you look at that list of all those missionaries that your church supports, and you think about the salvations that come you know, as they get their prayer letters and how all these things happen, that fruit is going to your guys' account because you're being faithful in supporting them, doing what you're supposed to be doing to, to help that cause. You know, think about that. You know, we need to stay the course. So we'll go ahead and have everybody stand tonight, and I'll have Brother Justin come in just a minute. I just want to encourage you tonight. You know, maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you know that God is dealing with your heart on some things, and, and you know there's some things that maybe He's already shown you that you need to do. I just challenge you tonight. You know, let this be the year that that happens. Let this be the year that that takes place, that you have some resolve and you decide, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get serious about that this year. I'm going to read my Bible through this year. I haven't done that before. I've tried a lot of times. I've gotten close, but, you know, this is the year I'm going to do it. You know, maybe this is the resolution that you need to make that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite that neighbor. I'm going to witness to that coworker. Whatever it is the Lord's laid on your heart, I, I don't know what God's dealing with you about. I just know that, you know, somebody here tonight needs to do business with God. You know, there's somebody here tonight that, that needs to make that resolution in their heart that they're going to be more like Christ this coming year than they were before. That's something that we can all keep. It's something that everybody here can attain. I just challenge you to do that. Pastor, you come. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm here. You know, altars are open. Believers, if you need to come to the altar, I, I hope you do come to the altar and say, I'm going to press toward this thing in my life. But maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm lost. I don't even know Jesus Christ. This is what I need. I can't know him more because I don't know him. And instead of making a resolution to be more spiritual this year, you just need to get saved and let the Lord help you. And that's where you're at tonight. Well, if you'll come, come down here, we'll, we'll help you. Um, we help you, we'll take you to the Bible and show you, show you how you can know the Lord as your Savior, what He's done for you. You probably already know that if you're here in this service tonight. You've heard it many times, but He wants to save you. And then if you're here, you're saved. Wow.
what do you resolve to do? I was kind of surprised when only 30% of people raised their hands and said they were going to, they resolved to do something. Um, I don't know if you've just <clears throat> become apathetic to it because you have never been able to keep it <laughs> or you just don't see the need of doing anything different than you've always done. But I know the Lord's working. He's always working to move forward. He wouldn't have said this. Paul wouldn't have made this statement, press toward, move forward. There's a mark that you're reaching for, the mark that the Lord has. And we're always moving forward. The Lord is always moving forward. We're always moving forward. And there's some things that you need to put behind you. There's some things I just need to put behind me. Some disappointments this past year, maybe what you did and what you didn't do, and need to put it behind you. There's something that you need to you need to lock onto and say, I'm just going to press forward in this in my life and let the Lord help you with that uh, to move forward in it. You need to repent of something. You need to just turn to God and say, no, I'm wrong. You're right. I need, I, this is what I need in my life. We all have that. When are you going to tell the Lord about it? When are you going to be honest with the Lord? Maybe the Lord's dealing with your heart about something totally different and you're just not going to say yes to him. You're not going to say yes to him. But tonight you said, I need to say yes to him in this area of my life. This is the opportunity. Talk to him about it. When he's speaking to you, there's never going to be a better opportunity than you speak right back to him and ask his help with what he's speaking to you. The devil will just snatch these things away from you. He'll get you so distracted when you leave here tonight that you'll totally forget about it, and then you really won't forget it, remember it tomorrow. It's going to be gone. You take this time to move forward with the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for how you speak to us and you guide us. Thank you for, for giving us this portion of Scripture and using the Apostle Paul to, to write this. And as we think about the, the fact that you used the Apostle Paul, which we would esteem as one of the greater Christians that we know of, following you and obeying you, and if he felt like he needed to press forward, um, then where are we at, uh, Lord? And um, that just shines through in this passage of Scripture that, that we just need to keep moving forward. And uh, Father, would you, would you help us to do so? Whatever you spoke to our hearts, would you seal that in our hearts tonight um, and help us to move forward in those things which please you and um, get over hurdles in our life that constantly are pulling at us, trying to get us to look back at, um, trying to just take our eyes off you. And so, Lord, help us to be victorious moving into this year. If you tear your coming to 2022, um, help us to take every advantage of every day that we have. Teach us how to do that, Lord. Um, maybe it's a resolution we need to make, but in our hearts, we know there's something, and you've been dealing with us about it. And Help us to lay that down and uh, watch you work in it, Lord. And we'll thank you for what you're doing. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, take time to know the Lord and to make him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless.